Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. In today's video, I thought I'd do another Q&A because I haven't done a Q&A on YouTube in a little while. So I asked you guys on my community tab and on Instagram as well if you had any questions for me. Um, so I'm going to go through some of those today, which Pickles is trying to have a look at. Um, if I don't get around to a question, it's nothing personal. I just received quite a lot of questions. So if you have something specific that I haven't answered, then um, feel free to send me a DM and we can chat in there. But let's get straight into it if they'll let me have a look at my phone. <laughs> The first question is how do you react when your bird bites you and the kind of key to this is to not react um if you react in any kind of way then your bird is going to get something out of it and want to do it more often so the best thing to do even though it really hurts is to not react so don't say anything don't look at your bird just go and place them on somewhere neutral like the back of a chair not in their cage uh, just somewhere neutral somewhere that's not that reinforcing and then basically ignore them for about five seconds this gives them the opportunity to understand that when they bite, the fun stops. And then after that, you can give them an opportunity to earn reinforcement afterwards. So it's not just the fun stops and that's it. It's we're going to try and rectify the situation by doing something fun afterwards. So that's how I react. And that is the best way to do it because uh, that is just better than reacting and screaming and, you know, flinging your bird off or putting them back in the cage because all of those things are not going to end up well with behavior you want to see more of. And the next one is how are your wedding plans going? um they're not going anywhere right now <laughs> so if you didn't know uh, me and david from the parrot teacher are engaged um but we haven't done any planning for the wedding because we can't afford it um if money wasn't an option uh, we would love to get married in like a zoo or a wildlife park and i did ask a couple of places uh, inquired and things and just for the food and the venue and like decorations and stuff it's about between eight and ten thousand pounds and that is a lot of money to spend on one single day. So um, we'll get around to it eventually. Um, we'll, we'll just see what happens. But yeah, no plans right now. <laughs> These cardias are being really naughty today. Um, oh, Scampi's just d deleting things. Okay. Um, the next question is, uh, what are your most controversial bird keeping opinions? I thought this is a really interesting question. I try not to be controversial, but I think in this day and age, <laughs> in this day and age you could be the most incredible bird owner and do everything right and it'll still be controversial to someone. So based on how people react to certain things, I would say that my most controversial opinions are firstly, not feeding pellets, which I've spoken about a lot because we go for a raw, natural, whole food diet. Um, using substrate, some people really don't like the idea of substrate, which is a shame because it's so enriching and amazing for birds. Scampi's dancing because David's dancing in the background. Um, and the other one which is really surprising and probably isn't controversial to a lot of people, but is to some is i am against clipping unless it's for a medical reason um i did a graphic on instagram about what clipping actually does to your bird you know the mental and physical implications and i received a lot of abuse um you know insults you know negative dms and just rude people and stuff like that which was completely unnecessary uh, we can all have different opinions but ultimately clipping is not something i would ever promote unless your bird has a medical need for it so those are probably my controversial ones i mean you guys might think i have other controversial ones but that's just my opinion based on how people react to what i say so somebody wanted to know about well a little bit more about my sort of work and things with animals my experience i have spoken about this a fair bit but for anyone who's not familiar um I have an honours degree in animal behaviour and welfare and I specialise in birds. I've been working with animals for over 12 years now. I've worked in all kinds of places, zoos, wildlife parks, vets. I've been a lecturer in animal care. I've worked on farms. I've been head of birds at a farm park. Um, I've worked in like boarding places for cats. I really like cats as well. I've worked in lots of places and uh, it gives you kind of a, a well-rounded experience of um, how to interact with animals and that kind of thing. And I've loved every minute of it, but there's definitely a lot of downsides to working with animals. So if you'd like a video on what it's really like to work with animals, let me know down in the comments. But um, I wouldn't change it for the world because I absolutely love it. And I'll scamp you sitting on the camera. So I'm going to turn that off and we're going to start again. The next question is, what are your thoughts on animal communicators? These are people who say that they can tell you what your bird is thinking or how they would respond to questions and things like that just from photos and things and i don't want to tread on anyone's toes but i personally don't believe in anything supernatural spiritual paranormal anything like that uh, i believe in science-based evidence-based things and i don't think there's any evidence that uh, animal communicators can do what they say they do so that's just my opinion if you want to indulge in that then go for it that's your choice uh, but it's not something that i would personally indulge in 
There are some people who say they're animal communicators, but when actually what they're doing is reading bird behaviour or animal behaviour in general, which is a different thing to being able to you know, I think they're like Dr. Doolittle and being able to talk to the animals. We'd all love that, but it's not something that's evidence-based. Um, but you can certainly gain an understanding of what your bird is um, experiencing based on their behaviour. And that's why we try and create a lot of uh, behaviour-based content on YouTube so that you can understand your birds better in that way. A lot of people have asked me how to kind of introduce two birds to you and things like that. David has a whole video on that, so I'm not going to cover that in this. So you can go and watch that and he's got loads and loads of tips in there. Um, somebody asked, are we getting a budgie soon? We'd love to see it. We'd love to have some budgies. Uh, it's not what we're planning on doing right now. It's definitely plans for the future. But stay tuned because things are changing here and we're really excited to tell you some of the things that are happening behind the scenes. Um, somebody also asked as well, can birds like finches and budgies live in the same cage? And I would say only if it's an aviary. I've worked with budgies and finches living in aviaries together and cockatiels as well and that's fine when there's so much space. In you know cages like this behind me and stuff, I think there wouldn't be enough space to have the kind of separation and meeting both of their needs. So that's my opinion, um, and I think you could better manage them in separate spaces. Uh, someone asked, what are the signs of separation anxiety? This is a problem that we uh, encounter a lot with our consultations with our business best behaved birds. Um, there are a lot of different signs of separation anxiety in birds. It could be excessive flock calling, it could be pacing, it could be not eating a lot of food, it could be not interacting with toys and things like that. It can be showing these more kind of erratic behaviours, undesirable behaviours. Pickles is currently chasing Scampi, which is naughty. Um, it can be all different kinds of things and it's all about understanding your own bird's behaviour, what they're experiencing, are they a solo bird and maybe that's why they're experiencing separation anxiety and there are a lot of ways to help with that but it's not something I'm planning on making a video on because it is very specialist and that's why we tackle that kind of problem in our uh, consultations with rest birds because we can make loads of different videos but some of these things are very specific and I don't want to give out information that people might misinterpret and then they won't be able to solve the problem. So that's a very long-winded way of saying it's very dependent on the individual. Uh, someone asked, when did you get your first bird? I get this asked a lot, so just briefly, because I've mentioned it in other Q&As, my first birds were ducks, they were not parrots, um, and they were called Ham and Daisy, and I loved them, they were Khaki Campbells, and I got them when I was 16, 17, something like that. And then somebody asked as well, um, were you planning on getting cockatiels when you've got chip and fish? The answer is yes. Uh, when I moved in with David, he actually had a cockatiel called Billy, uh, female, and she was very old and we loved her very, very much and uh, she sadly left us. After that, the house was very quiet and we just knew that we had to have cockatiels back in our lives, so we did opt for baby birds at the time. It was the right decision for us, but all of our corneas are rescues and all of our future birds will be rescues as well, but uh, I just wanted to let you know that that was the situation. How do I stop my cockatiel biting my ears? Uh, biting ears is a very common problem with uh, parrots. It's very interesting. I think what you can do is obviously work on, you know, behaviours and things on the shoulders, on the head, that kind of stuff, and asking your bird to come off when you ask them to. David actually just did a video about whether you should allow your bird on your head and shoulders, and a lot of that comes down to training. Um, but also you can do other things to protect your ears. In my life hacks video, I made a toy necklace and it redirects your bird's behavior onto chewing the toys instead of your ears. So you can maybe try that and then check out the other life hacks in that video. How do you get a young bird to fly safely? Um, I have a video on recall and station training and essentially with any behavior, you want to start small in successive approximations and then go from there. You can't expect your bird to fly instantly. You need to be able to teach them how to manage their wings. You need to do exercise with them as well. I have a video all about exercise and building up those muscles. Um, and also with things like windows, it's kind of hard to teach birds that you know windows are dangerous. So we have net curtains, they're not very stylish, but they do keep our birds safe. You can also get window stickers as well. But all training is about teaching in very small successive approximations. Can you tell I'm distracted? <laughs> Hi Scampi, I'm gonna get him out of my hair and we'll do the next question. <laughs> The next question is, are there any types of cages that you would not recommend at all? Now, I don't like round cages or any cages that are kind of round but have flat sides. 
there's a really strange cage that kind of looks like the crystal maze dome that a lot of people like. I really don't like it. Um, I don't think that round cages are great. Same with like dome top cages because I think when you have corners it's a lot easier to um, enrich the space because you can attach things better and you know they can play on top of it. So those are my personal opinions. I also don't really like stackable cages that much because it's very dark when you put a cage on top of the other. Uh, Olive's cage that we have does have like a play top thing that slides in but when you have it on there um, it really makes the space very dark so anything that kind of goes on top of the other I don't really like and also with cages like that if you can stack them they're probably a bit on the small side um, because you know you see these big cages back here for you know cockatiels and the conyers and stuff you couldn't really stack them very well because it wouldn't be very stable um, and also of course <laughs> it goes without saying um, any cage that is too small for your bird you want lots of space for enrichment and fun and exercise uh, is YouTube your full-time job? Um, yes and no. Uh, we do YouTube as a big part of our job. We also have Best Behaved Birds, that I talk about all the time because I'm very passionate about our business. It's a behaviour and training business for birds, affordable, we work globally, and I just absolutely love what we do. Um, and I also do some like freelance social media stuff as well. So um, I kind of have my fingers in lots of different pots, um, and I really like working for myself because I've worked for people before in my entire career, and I like being my own boss because you have a lot of freedom and control. So yeah, I really love what I do. How long did it take you to tame your birds? Uh, this, obviously we have five birds, so it's kind of subjective for all of them. Pickles came to us as a rescue, but she was very, very comfortable with us almost from day one. Uh, Chip and Fish came to us as babies. And again, whilst they were a bit skittish as babies, they were still quite comfortable with us from day one, although we had to obviously, with all of our birds, teach them that we are um, you know, safe humans and everything's fine. Um, with Scampi, I don't really know. David's behind the camera. How long do you think it took us with Scampi? Oh, he was like comfortable like, sitting, but then the biting and the other issues because yeah, of the behaviour issues he it's, had. It's subjective what taming really means. Do you mean a bird that doesn't bite because all birds are going to bite a little bit? Do you mean a bird that likes scritches because not all birds like scritches it's hard i mean olive was the longest to be comfortable with us because she didn't, really didn't have the best start in life she was kept in a tiny cage and she never came out she had her wings clipped so um she probably took the longest um probably took her a good few months to be really comfortable with us um but with hands it took her a very very long time probably over a year to be comfortable stepping up on hands and not lashing out immediately so um don't be surprised if it takes your birds longer because it's like let go of my hair. <laughs> it might take your birds a long time to actually be comfortable with you and that's fine. I think sometimes there's unrealistic expectations that your bird's going to love you instantly and it's just not like that, especially when you bring a new bird home. You're totally different. You are a different human. It's a different space, different sights, all things like that. So if it takes a while, that's fine. You need to go at your bird's own pace as with anything really. Do you have any other pets other than birds? No, uh, we would love to. We're thinking of maybe getting some vertebrates, but we have to decide what's right for us. Um, do you plan on getting any more birds in the future? Maybe, we'll see. Um, Indian ringnecks. Uh, I know you don't have one in your flock, but uh, a lot of influencers don't seem to have them and they have a bad rap. Why is that? Um, I think Indian rain necks are quite highly strung, uh, they're very easy to get overstimulated and hormonal quickly. They can be a bit more challenging as birds but I absolutely adore them. If we had the space we would love to have one. Uh, one of my dream birds is a, a male blue Indian ring neck, very specific but I do adore them. But you know it's just one of those things, they're, they are more challenging birds and I think people don't realise that they are a bit more challenging than maybe they seem to be. So that's probably why you don't see as many of them but uh, we would definitely love to have one in the future. Is there such a thing as too much sleep? Uh, my bird can sometimes get 15 hours. Um, I would say having that much sleep on a regular basis isn't ideal. We normally say about 12 hours of sleep is the best amount for a bird. 12 hours of light and 12 hours of dark with the circadian rhythm and light cycle because that is going to give your bird uh, a chance to not be hormonal. If you give them too much sleep over a long period of time, it could cause some other potential problems. It could cause them to be a bit agitated as well because they wanna get up and start the day. However, we sometimes recommend increased sleep for a week to treat hormonal kind of surges. So I would say try and stick to the 12 hours of light, 12 hours of dark going forward. That's usually the best light cycle for a bird. Is breeding parrots difficult for beginners? Um, I suppose this is probably going to be one of the controversial things that I say. Um, I don't think that people should be breeding birds regularly just because. Um, 
it's there's just so many parrots in rescue centers looking for homes and when people breed and breed and breed just because they want to breed um, birds and try and sell them I don't think that's the best thing to do um, the other thing as well is I get a lot of DMs urgent messages urgent comments help you know the parents have rejected the bird what do I do now how am I supposed to feed this baby bird I don't know I've never bred birds myself I have worked with some kind of baby birds but not parrot species and it's very very easy to get hand feeding wrong you can aspirate a bird you can burn their crop you can get um like crop stasis as well so please 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 avoid breeding your birds at all costs they don't have to breed to live a happy life you don't need to breed them uh, there are going to be exceptions to this for lots of different things i'm not going to go into that but as a general rule for general parrot owners please 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 don't try and breed your birds because there are just so many other birds out there who are looking for loving homes how do i get through the terrible twos with my birds the terrible twos are the period of time kind of like puberty uh, where your birds reach sex sexual maturity and they get a bit more erratic than normal a bit more agitated than normal they're kicking off more often louder um it's a challenging time and every bird's going to go through it different for example chip and fish probably a bit louder than they were when they were babies but they're coming out of it now you know they're nearly four years old and it hasn't been that bad i'd say it's probably slightly worse with birds like macaws and conyers uh indian ringnecks as well birds like that who are very easily overstimulated um the best thing to do is keep your bird busy because a busy bird is a tired bird and one that's not going to have excess energy for some of these undesirable behaviours. Keep up the training, keep up the consistency and also having a really great diet and sleep cycle. If your bird is on a diet filled with junk and uh, filler ingredients and that kind of thing, then you're probably more likely to have exacerbated undesirable behaviours. If you've got them on a really healthy diet and you've given them good quality sleep as well, then I think the terrible twos are going to be slightly easier to manoeuvre. And the last one for now is how do your birds get along with each other? Um, so chipper fish, they love each other because they're brothers, but they do have brotherly love kind of spats. Um, they get along with pickles more or less as long as she doesn't come up to them. I mean, she can be in their space, but if they get too close to her, she doesn't really like it. They're fine with Olive as well. She's completely indifferent to them. Scampi is very in your face. He's a very interested bird in absolutely everything and anything. So he can be a bit OTT. Um, and he also gets very overstimulated very quickly. So he doesn't do as well with chip and fish. Similarly with Olive as well, we are actually DNA testing Olive um, to see whether she is a boy or a girl and I have my suspicions you could be male because her and Scampi aren't the best of friends. We're still doing training ongoing, you know, it's going to be an ongoing process as I said with other things. It's going to take as long as it takes, we're in no rush, we want our birds to be nice and settled. Um, but yeah, and Pickles, when she's away from Scampi, she's okay-ish with Olive. But again, if Olive comes too close to her space, she doesn't like it. So it's definitely an interesting dynamic here. Um, and don't worry about Olive. She gets plenty of love and attention. It's not like she's just on her own. And, you know, who knows, maybe in the future she may have a companion as well when she think when we think that she is ready for it. So, um, yeah, they get along fine. We, we're home all day, so we're always managing our birds and making sure they're having plenty of outside time. Um, but it's definitely a challenge when you have more than a couple of birds. So that brings me to the end of the video. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. Again, I'm really sorry if I didn't get around to your question. I had so many of them in this video, which would just be like hours long if I <laughs> did them all. So if you ask me something specific or about your bird, feel free to drop it in the comments and I can reply to you there or send me a DM on Instagram. I've always got my DMs open, so you can always message me. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day. Take care and see you later.